back to first year undergraduate microeconomics. So far in this course, we've concentrated on perfect competition and monopoly. Now, they're models that don't require any strategic interaction between businesses. Perfectly competitive firms just take the prices given and choose how much they would like to produce. The monopoly faces no competitors, so there is no strategy. As soon as we start considering small numbers of businesses interacting with each other, we need to consider strategy, and that means we need to consider game theory. Now, game theory is well beyond this course, and there are literally hundreds of different ways that we can model the interaction between different businesses. In this presentation, however, we're going to show the simplest way, and that is to model competition as a very simple game a game called A Prisoner's Dilemma. The Prisoner's Dilemma game is very simple. There are simply going to be two different businesses and they're going to be competing with each other. Each business has only two strategies. An individual seller can choose whether to compete hard or not compete hard. That's its only choice. However, both businesses make their decision about their strategy at the same time, not knowing for sure what the other business is going to do. So the sellers decide how to compete simultaneously. Further, this game is only played once. There's not going to be any repetition. So each business gets one shot at deciding whether to compete hard or to not compete hard. To represent the game, we use a thing called a payoff matrix, and that's what I'm going to start designing here. We're going to have firm one in black. And firm one's going to have two strategies. First strategy is compete hard. And its second strategy will be not compete hard. And then we're going to have Firm 2. I'm going to have Firm 2 in blue. So Firm 2 is going to be over here. And it's also going to have two strategies. It's going to have the strategy Compete Hard, and I'll just put that as CH. And it's going to have the strategy Not Compete Hard. How do we read this table? Well, if Firm 1 competes hard, we're going to be in this first column here. If it chooses not to compete hard, we'll be in the second column. If Firm 2 chooses to compete hard, we'll be in the first row. And if Firm 2 chooses not to compete hard, we'll be in the second row. So each box here describes a complete state of the world. Each firm can only choose one of two things. And our four boxes cover all four possibilities. So for example, this box here is where Firm 1 chooses not to compete hard and Firm 2 chooses to compete hard. Conversely, this box down here is where Firm 1 chooses not to compete hard. We're in the second column. And Firm 2 also chooses not to compete hard. We're in the second row. And so on. Now, let's put some payoffs here. The thing that the firms care about. Well, first off, let's assume that if both firms compete hard, so we're going to be in this box here, then they just make normal economic profit. So we'll put zero in there. The black up in the top right-hand corner means zero payoff for firm one, and the zero down in the bottom left-hand corner is the payoff for firm two. Blue for firm two, black for firm one. Now, what happens if both firms decide not to compete hard? Well, that maximises their joint payoffs. If neither firm competes hard, they're going to both be making some oligopoly profits, they're making some economic profits, and let's say that comes to an economic profit of 100 for firm one, and also 100 for firm two. So if neither firm compete hard, they make economic profits, and they both make 100 economic profits. 
But what happens, for example, if Firm 1 doesn't compete hard, but Firm 2 does compete hard? Well, then Firm 2 is able to steal a whole bunch of Firm 1's customers, and it can make itself even better off than under cooperation. So in that situation, where Firm 2 competes hard but Firm 1 doesn't, Firm 2 gets, say, 120 as its payoff, but Firm 1, well, it's now the bunny. It's not competing hard and losing all its customers to Firm 2, so it makes, say, minus 50. That's a very bad outcome for Firm 1. Firm 1 ends up worse under this situation than it would under standard competition. And similarly, if Firm 2 doesn't compete hard, but Firm 1 does compete hard, then that's going to be great for Firm 1. Firm 1's going to steal all Firm 2's customers and make 120. But again, Firm 2, well, Firm 2's the bunny now, and Firm 2 is going to lose 50. So there are our payoffs for different outcomes of this game. The next thing we have to do is try and work out our prediction for what the firms will actually do if they play this game. Now, notice first that from Firm 1's perspective, it doesn't matter what Firm 2 does, Firm 1 always prefers to compete hard. How can we see this? Well, let's first just concentrate on the top row. The top row is where Firm 2 competes hard. So we're just going to be in these two possibilities. If Firm 1 predicts or believes Firm 2 is going to compete hard, what does Firm 1 want to do? Well, that's easy. We just have to compare the two payoffs for Firm 1. If Firm 1 believes that Firm 2 will compete hard, Firm 1 can either also compete hard and get zero, or Firm 1 cannot compete hard and get minus 50. Now, zero is not great, but it's better than minus 50. So in that situation, we know that if Firm 1 predicts that Firm 2 will compete hard, then Firm 2 will also want to compete hard. It will want to be in this box here. It will not want to be over in this box. However, that depended on Firm 1 predicting Firm 2 would compete hard. What happens if Firm 1 thinks that Firm 2 won't compete hard? Firm 1 predicts that Firm 2 will not compete hard, then Firm 1 thinks we're going to be in the bottom row. And again, we can ask, what does Firm 1 want to do? We can work that out by looking at the payoffs for Firm 1. If Firm 2 is not competing hard, then Firm 1 gets 120 if it chooses to compete hard. However, if Firm 2 is not competing hard and Firm 1 also chooses not to compete hard, Firm 1 only gets 100. So if Firm 1 believes or predicts that Firm 2 will not compete hard, then Firm 1 maximises its payoff by competing hard. So Firm 1 will want to compete hard, it won't want to be over in this box here. Notice what's happened. It didn't matter what the belief was of Firm 1. Firm 1 could believe that Firm 2 was competing hard, or Firm 1 could believe that Firm 2 was not competing hard. In both situations, Firm 1 wanted to compete hard. So in that situation, where Firm 1 always wants to compete hard, regardless of its prediction about what Firm 2 will do, then we say that Firm 1 has a dominant strategy. Its dominant strategy in this game is to compete hard. And our prediction should be that Firm 1 will play its dominant strategy. It's always better off by competing hard, so we can predict that Firm 1 should compete hard in this simple oligopoly game. What about for Firm 2? Well, exactly the same intuition is going to hold. If Firm 2 
believes that firm one is going to compete hard, so we're in the first column, then firm two can either compete hard and get zero, or not compete hard and get minus 50. Well, it prefers zero to minus 50, so in that situation, firm two will compete hard. And if firm two predicts that firm one will not compete hard, so we're in the second column, then firm two can either compete hard and get 120, or not compete hard and get 100. So again, firm two is going to want to compete hard because 120 is more than 100. So firm two also has a dominant strategy, which is compete hard. It doesn't matter whether it believes firm one is going to compete hard or not compete hard, firm two always wants to compete hard, regardless of its beliefs about firm one. So compete hard is also a dominant strategy for firm two. And if firm one has a dominant strategy to compete hard, in other words, no matter what it believes about firm two, firm one wants to compete hard, and if Firm 2 also has a dominant strategy of compete hard, no matter what Firm 2 believes about Firm 1, Firm 2 wants to compete hard, then a pretty sensible prediction of this game is that both firms are going to choose to compete hard. But of course, if both firms choose to compete hard, they get payoffs of 0-0, zero, zero. they just get normal economic profits. Notice that. If the firms were able to not compete hard, if they could somehow have managed to not compete hard, they could have both been better off. They could have both ended up with 100 as their payoff rather than zero as their payoff. But they can't do it. Because if, say, firm two believes firm one won't compete hard, then they'll try and make the extra $20 and compete hard. And similarly, if Firm 1 believes Firm 2 won't compete hard, Firm 1 will also try and get the extra $20 compared to not competing hard. Firm 1 will do that by competing hard. But then they both compete hard and they compete away their economic profits. And that's a basic structure of almost every oligopoly model in economics, that the businesses would both be better off if they could avoid competition. But the difficulty is how do you avoid competition? And a lot of business strategy and a lot of industrial economics looks at situations where businesses try to avoid competition. In other words, situation where businesses try and get out of this prisoner's dilemma. Now this compete hard, compete hard solution it's great for consumers. So there are laws in place to try and prevent businesses from not competing hard. For example, businesses aren't allowed to enter agreements or arrangements or contracts where they agree not to compete hard. That breaches the competition laws in most countries around the world. The businesses would like those sort of contracts, because then they could trust each other, both choose not to compete hard, and both be better off. But those contracts are not binding. If they tried to sign those contracts, they could not enforce them in a court of law, and so the temptation to compete will take over, and we'll get competition again. So let's just summarise where we've got to. We've illustrated oligopoly using a simple game called The Prisoner's Dilemma. It shows the problems for firms competing against each other, even when there's only a small number of firms. Both firms have a strong incentive to compete hard, even though it would be better for the firms if they could agree or coordinate not to compete hard. Now, of course, competition's good for the customers, even if it's bad for the business's profit. The problem that the firms face is this coordination problem. They would both like to not compete hard if they could trust the other firm not to compete hard. But of course, they can't trust each other. Each firm has an incentive to cheat 
and compete hard, regardless of what it believes its rival is going to do. It wants to steal its rival's customer, behave opportunistically and make more profit. That's where we're going to leave this course. So for the final time, thanks for listening.